By popular demand and ideal meteorological conditions, Keithley 610C calibrations and experiments. The first thing I've got to do is replace that ancient output connector, because I don't have the right plug for that. Then I can hook up a modern voltmeter and calibrate everything more precisely. The other instruments that will be involved in the calibration can warm up while I'm preparing the cable. This waterproof stainless steel Lumbach plug is an overkill for sure, but it has been waiting in my bottom drawer for years now, so I might as well put it to good use. The assembly of this thing was more complicated than the repair of the instrument itself. I've been trying to come up with some sort of joke about plugging in the rear of the meters, but I drew a total blank there. Alright, those were only preparations, now we'll start actually calibrating. The first setting on the list is the mechanical zero. With the meter turned off and the reflection of the needle concealed by the needle itself, we'll set a perfect zero reading. Then we can turn it on, select the most sensitive voltage range and zero it out again, this time with the electronic zero controls. Then we go back to the times one range and set up a precise and stable one volt source. Luckily I have this Knick precision voltage and current source, which makes that very easy. Now we can apply that voltage to the electrometer and monitor its output. If needed, we'll adjust the output voltage to exactly 3 volts with a fine zero potentiometer. Finally, we can calibrate the meter to a full scale reading with the meter cal potentiometer. Right next to it is the center zero cal potentiometer, which needs no further explanation. Next on the list are the resistance modes. We are supposed to set the voltage between the junction of two resistors and the unity gain output to one volt. Very touchy. This is the best I could do. The last potentiometer is for DC bias. That can be measured across a resistor again. We're looking for 25 millivolts here. The final thing I could calibrate is the 1 milliampere output. But I'm not going to use that ever, so I'll just skip that step entirely. Just like the two pages of tests after that, because even if I found that a certain component has drifted slightly out of spec, I wouldn't replace it. Let's do some experiments instead. I've shown this thing before. It's a set of very high value resistors in a decorative acrylic box. What I didn't mention then is that an acrylic box is far from an ideal enclosure for these. Because when a normal everyday voltage is applied, the resulting current will always be invisible in the background noise that is inevitably picked up by the leads. A shielded box with a driven guard would be better. Now that we've got this super special meter, we can sort of slowly measure that 100 gig resistor in the highest multiplier setting. But then no moving and no touching, because in the 100 gigaohm leak, the isolation resistance suddenly becomes relevant. There are many better ways to do it, but now I want to show you something more interesting than resistors. The fact that LEDs generate small amounts of current when exposed to light is fairly well known, I think. But I was surprised to find that even in total darkness a minuscule current is flowing. That's neither EMI nor meter inaccuracy, that's dark current. Sounds like a word from sci-fi, but is in reality one of the main sources of noise in image sensors. A word of advice to the free energy enthusiasts out there. This is not what you're looking for. Another idea I got from the aluminum foil in the last experiment was to make a crude microphone and use the electrometer as an amplifier.
didn't work, would have needed a huge bias voltage, I guess. But with a small electric microphone, it worked pretty well. We can also use it as a low frequency amplifier. We can also use it as a low frequency amplifier. This is what it sounds like. Well, that's all I have at the moment. If you've got any more ideas, please let me know.